and welcome to the Wise Leader Virtual Summit. I'm your host, Firm Faith Watson. With me today is Dr. Colleen Scott. And Dr. Scott will be sharing with us some practical words of wisdom to help us on our leadership journey. Dr. Scott, thank you very much for taking the time to share with us today. You're most welcome. And thanks for asking me to do this. It's a privilege and an honor. You are welcome. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're from, and what you do? So as you said, I'm Colleen Scott. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and um, I came to the U.S. Um, at an early age to attend college. I'm an associate professor at um, Mississippi State University in the chemistry department. And I am also a mother, a wife, a daughter, a sister, an aunt. I'm a lot of things. I wear a lot of hats, like most of us do. Thank you. Um, this interview is, is very special for us. Dr. Scott grew up in the same community that I grew up in, in Jamaica. And I don't think she knew me, but I knew her. I knew her because I used to watch her standing at the bus stop. She used to be very neat, I remember, just standing at the bus. She looked so studious. And we, we never exchanged words or anything, but I just noticed her. And so when I was in the US many years after at Southern Illinois University, one of my friends went to church and she came back home and she said, Faith, there's a Jamaican that I want you to meet. And I was pleased to see that it was you. And I had to tell you that, oh, I know you remember when I was a little girl, I used to see you at the bus stop. And it has been just a blessing to just see you and how God has been working marvelously in your life. And I look forward to getting into your story today to see how God has been working. So Psalm 75 verses six and seven indicates that promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and sets up another. So could you share with us some pivotal moments in your journey to help us understand how our Heavenly Father orchestrated your career? So thanks for that question. That's an, a really great question because God has been instrumental in every critical phase in my life. For example... When it was time, you know, and, and we went to our olive school and you have to pass your exam to go to high school. But I didn't pass my exam like I was supposed to do to go to the high school that my mother wanted me to go to. But guess what? God opened the door and there I was in high school. I went to Meadowbrook High School. I did not pass for Meadowbrook High School, but God opened the door in some very funny way um, that I don't know if I have time to share, but that was a pivotal moment. And then after high school, I was supposed to go to college. Well, not many people go to college, you know, after high school in Jamaica, but then I was trying to get a scholarship. And that was another pivotal moment because I didn't have the, the athletic marks that the other girls had, but I had the academics that they didn't have at the time. So the coach from Auburn came to recruit some uh, another girl, but she didn't have the academic um, background to get into the school, but I did. And so he saw me at the meet and there we go again, God opened the door. He didn't come looking for me, at least that's what he thought. He didn't come looking for me, but God showed him me. And again, God opened the door and there I was in college. I hadn't even dreamed of going to the, uh, the U.S. to college. That was like, wow. And another pivotal moment after college to go to graduate school. Again, I was told that um, I didn't qualify to go to their graduate school. I'm like, what? 
and that I wouldn't pass their courses. Well, God did it again. He, op he opened the door and before I know it, I, I was at the University of Pittsburgh. And um, yes, the courses were very difficult. I struggled, but God was with me and they did not expect me to pass. They did not expect me to complete the, the program. But there I was graduating with a PhD. But through it all, I mean, God was instrumental in my development, in showing me, you know, who to work for, all the little things that, uh, the things we call little things, there were critical things. And, um, and then the one of, it's not the final, but the next step after graduate school was getting a job. And um, I, I, um, I had my baby after, right after I graduated. And so I, I stayed home for a year and then started to look for a job. And I got, in a, I got an interview in, um, in a, at a community college in Florida where my mom was. And I was like, yes, I, you know, I'm going to go. But then um, I knew in my spirit that was not the right decision. I knew I was supposed to stay in Illinois, but I couldn't see how. Mm -hmm. And then I had spoken to the, the department chair at the time in the chemistry department, and there was no position available at the time. And so when I got the interview to go to Florida, and I knew in my spirit that was not what I was supposed to do, I called the, the department chair and I said, I got an interview for Florida, for a, a college in Florida, and they asked me the next day to come in for an on-campus interview. I said, I know I'm going to get that job. There's no way I'm not going to get that job, but I know that's not what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to stay here. So do you have anything? She's like, oh, by the way, when can you start? I mean, it had to be God. And I was like, oh. <laughs> And she was like, can you start next week? I said, give me two weeks. I need to find a daycare for my son. And there I was. And so again, over and over. And so something came up um, a couple of years ago and I said, God, I don't qualify. And he said to me, when have you ever qualified? <laughs> and then I started thinking, no, I didn't qualify for that. I didn't qualify. So my point here is when God has you, you don't have to qualify. He qualifies you. And God has been qualifying me all the way. And I give him all the glory. I'm not ashamed to testify to whoever that God qualifies me wherever he's taken me because he is the one that has got me to where I am. So lots of pivotal moments and all orchestrated by God. Wow. I, I know you can go on, but let me ask you something about what you said earlier. You said you knew that you were not supposed to go to Florida. Help us understand your thought process with that. Well, I knew I would get the job, but in my spirit, I just didn't think that was what I was supposed to do. My husband was okay with it. We had just moved to Illinois, like maybe a, six months prior. Mm -hmm. And I just felt in my spirit that, it was just in my spirit. I, I can't really explain it sometimes when okay. God is speaking to you is mm -hmm. not something that other people can understand that you can mm -hmm. articulate, mm -hmm. but you just know. And I told her, I said, I don't, I know that's not what I'm supposed to do, but I would, I would have probably done it. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I thank God that he stepped in mm -hmm. and, and, and caused me not to do something that I wasn't, so, I knew I wasn't supposed to do, but mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was a good thing because I would have probably went on the interview if she had said, no, we have nothing. Mm -hmm. and I probably would, and I don't know what would have happened I would have hoped that God would have redirected me to where I'm supposed to be if I step out 
uh, you know, of his will that he will find a way to get me back in his will. Okay. So <clears throat> throughout your life, especially after grad school, we see that God was leading you, right? From <laughs> your early days in Jamaica, high school, college, and then grad school. And then God intervened in your career yes, to the did. place where you are now. Do you want to share about how you got to where you are right now and any pivotal moments that you want to share that would be? So that's another God <laughs> intervention. It's all about God. So I wasn't, so she, um, the department chair, she had a, um, a postdoctoral position. Her postdoc was leaving and she had some money. And she's like, why don't you just join my group and uh, you can teach for a while and you can help me with my students. And so I took the position and I stayed because that's what I felt like I was supposed to do. But I didn't quite know where, what career, you know, what I was supposed to do in my career. I felt as a child that I was supposed to be teaching but then when I got to grad school, I found out teaching didn't pay a lot of money. So I don't want to teach. I want to make a lot of money. So I want to go to, to industry because you get this big money. But again, in my spirit, it wasn't ringing, you know, the right thing. So anyway, um, I started working um, with, with my PI, the department chair. And she said to me one day, um, she decided to to take another position somewhere else. Could you could you share with us where you are at this point? Which institution you're at at this? So point? I am at Mississippi State University. Okay, I, and I and I I'll, I'll, I'll get to that really quickly. No, not 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 where you are. Like this position that you're currently talking about. Which institution was that? Oh, that was at Southern Illinois University. Right, that's what I wanted you to say. Yeah, so I was at Southern Illinois University in Carbondale. Right. And um, that's where I started my, um, my independent career. Mm -hmm. And when she was leaving, she said, why don't you apply for my position? I was like, are you crazy? They're not going to hire me. I don't qualify. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, what? Why is she? Why did she say that? But she planted a seed mm -hmm. because I had not thought about becoming a professor. It was not on my list. Mm -hmm. um, if you, if I had put down a hundred things to do, being a professor was not on my top one hundred things to do. Wow. But she planted a seed, and that seed never left. Mm -hmm. And so I started to to invest in it some more. Because again, I felt in my spirit, why would she say that, you know? And so I prayed about it, I invested in it, and then God opened the door. So we got a new dean and he wanted to hire me. And um, he, again, I didn't really qualify in terms of the way the world saw the qualification, but God opened the door. And I got in and I got on the faculty at Southern Illinois University in 2010. And again, that was another God moment, like what just happened? Now I'm an assistant professor and I'm doing research and I'm directing students and I'm like, oh my God, I don't, I, I don't know if I can do this. This is a lot of responsibilities. But again, you know, it, it was rough, but God, was there with me. I could tell he was there with me. I felt like Joseph in the prison and God was with him, even though it was maybe rough in the prison. And, um, and then after five years, some things were not working well, but I didn't understand the spiritual aspects of it. Mm -hmm. I just kept trusting God and believing, well, if he called me to do this, he must have a plan. <laughs> And so after five years, things were not going as, as planned. And um, out of the, you know, what people say out of the blues, but I guess God put it on um, the department head at Mississippi State on his heart. And so they contacted me about a position at Mississippi State. I had not thought about Mississippi State at all and knew of it um, through sports and everything else. 
but I had not thought about working here. Mm -hmm. And then actually he had called my, my, my office phone and left a message in July. And I didn't get the message until October because I don't listen to my messages. <laughs> and so when I, when I got back to him, my husband was like, that job is gone. And I'm like, well, we'll see, let's see. So I, I got back in touch with him. It's like, no, no, no. Would you like to come down for a visit? I was like, sure. So to make this story sh um, short, I could go on and on. God opened the door and, um, and just marvelous, just wonderfully. He just, you know, and he told me when, when I came on my interview, they told me I would have to start over. And I was like, I do not want to start this thing over again. That's five more years. I've already done five years. It's like I'm in prison doing another five years, you know? And I was like, I can't start over again. And so the morning when I was supposed to leave, I was going to meet with the department head one, for one final meeting. And I was going to tell him, I can't start over again. But then my devotion, <laughs> and this is so critical. That's why we have to be in tune to the Holy Spirit. In my devotion, the first devotion, it says, cast your net again. I said, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to do this devotion. So I, I'm going to skip it because I'm not trying to hear cast your net again. I'm not trying to hear that. Well, so I went to another devotion and he said, um, I am doing a new thing. Mm. I am doing it. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I went down there and I'm like, okay, I'll take the job. And I started over again. And it was hard. But what God reminded me that was going to be different this time was he was doing this. It wasn't me. He was going to do it. So I just had to just be patient, do my job, and let him open doors. I should, he was telling me, don't try to go knock on doors. I'm going to open the door for you. You don't even have to knock. That's what God said. You don't even have to knock. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open the doors. And every time I, I, I forget that I'm not supposed to knock and I go try knocking, it blows up in my face. And I said, okay, Lord, you told me, I don't even have to knock. You open the door. And God has opened door. People have been contacting me and say, hey, you know about this? I'm like, yes. So God has done exactly above, beyond, more than what I thought he was going to do when he said, cast your net again. He opened doors, he's given me awards, he's allowed me to get grants, he's allowed me to publish in places I dreamt of. He's just allowed these things to happen. He's allowed people in my life that I'm like, how would I even have a chance to talk to these people? And a prof these are professional in my professional life. And so I don't even, I don't even knock anymore. I just let, I just wait and let God open a door and I said, okay, Lord, thank you. And I just go in because he told me he's doing it and I'm just being obedient and let him do it because he can do it way, way better than I could even, even if I try my best. So, so that's how I am where I am right now. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> you certainly didn't have to knock on door. When you talk about an open door, for a university to, to be contacting you. And I have... waited, what, three, four months? Yeah, from July to October. Yeah. That's God. That's certainly an open door. No man can shut. No mm -hmm. man could shut that door. And they actually tried to hire someone else before me, and it fell through. And while they were trying to hire me, they were trying to hire someone else, and it fell through. Amazing. Mm. Mm. So where are you on your journey now? Um, so you went in a, as an assistant professor. You had to start over. Yes, I had to start over, but thank God he opened the door. I'm now an associate professor. So I got promoted with tenure got... in 2020. I also received a prestigious career award from the NSF, which wow. is a really big deal. 
And again, I was not even going to apply because I was like, I can't get this. It's, you know, mm -hmm. and again, God just amazed me just over and over again because I, I applied <laughs> because I felt like, okay, you have to do it, you know, whether you want to or not. And so I, and I said to myself, if you're going to do it, you, you, you may as well spend some time and do it to the best of your ability. And so I, I, I did absolutely, I did just that. And I spent some time researching some things and doing some things and, and I applied and I was, you know, expecting the negative results, but I was praying at the same time. And I was like, God, I don't even know how to pray anymore. I want this thing, but I want your will to be done. I know you opened the doors. I'm not going to worry about it one way or the other. You are going to make the way that needs to be done. You're going to direct me. And I just had peace about it, forgot about it and everything. And, um, you know, we know, we know about what time you usually get that call and the time came and passed. And I was like, well, they asked me, have you heard anything? I said, no. Nope. And, um, and then one day I got the email and I will tell you, I cried, I danced, I praised, I closed my door and I had a praise party in my office. Wow. I was just elated. And it's just like, you know, you, you work and um, sometimes you don't feel validated sometimes, especially as a black woman, mm -hmm. you feel like you have to prove yourself 10 times more mm -hmm. to be validated. And even though I know who I am in Christ, we're still out there in the world working and according to their rules your promotion comes from you know their way but I always pray I say God you will you will promote me you're just the, the scripture you you read before we start that's that was my scripture going through mm -hmm. promotion doesn't come from the north south east or west it only comes from God above Mm -hmm. And I would say that all the time in my prayers. And I said, even if I never get a grant, if you said I will be promoted, I will be promoted. If I never get these things, if you said I'll be promoted, I'll be promoted. Or I could have all these things, but if you said I won't be promoted, then I won't be promoted because it's, the decision is God. And so I thank him every day that he chose to bless me with these things. And I'm just grateful and I'm very thankful. And I just keep encouraging people to not give up, you know, trusting God. And if they're not Christians, I just tell them don't give up because they don't want to hear about God. Sometimes I still tell them about God, but, you know, but just don't give up. Wow. Amazing. A prestigious award from the NSF, the National Science Foundation. Foundation, yes. Um, that that that's amazing. Um, it's it's amazing hearing how God has been working in your life. So, this next question has to do with factors that you think. God may have used to promote you. It might be a little bit awkward for you to answer, but let me help you out. What are some things that people tend to appreciate about you or probably may have said or even noted about you? So for the most part, um, the, the person, so I'm very personal. I love people. So I'm very friendly mm -hmm. and I'm very personable. And I just like to be true to who I am. So most people, the thing that people said the most about me is that I'm, I'm real. Um, you said authentic. Um, what you see is what you get. You, mm. I'm no different at home than I am at work. If you see me out in the street, if I'm in church, what you see is what you get. Um, 
there's no other me somewhere hiding in a closet. And I think people appreciate that. Well, some people do, not everyone. Does. Some people appreciate that I, I can be real. And another thing that God has taught me is just how to be humble. Mm. Because humility will take you a long way. You know, us in Jamaica, we have all these pride sayings, you know, we would rather this than that. And, and we, we're just very proud people. And sometimes, you know, the saying say you cut off your nose to spite your face. We're very good at that in Jamaica. And so coming here and having to deal with different people from different walks of the world and, and stuff, you, you have to first know who you are. And he's taught me to be humble, not to try to, you know, be bigger than I really am. And just, and just, I think people, and then I'm very tenacious at the same time. You know, I, I can be aggressive when I go after things. And, um, but ag aggressive with grace, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. you know? I, I don't try to step over people or put people down just so I can get ahead. And, you know, if it, if it, if, if it won't please the Lord, then I, I would say I won't do it. Um, have I done stuff that haven't pleased the Lord? We all have. But if it comes to, okay, make this decision, and I'm very conscious of, of it, and I'm like, that, that's not, that's not, I'm, that's not going to be pleasing to God. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry. And I've had to tell people that who have given me advice that goes against the word of God. And I said, I can't do it. And I thank God every day that he has allowed me to do that in many, many, many times. Now I have messed up several times as well, but for the most part, he has allowed me, and I've said this to people, he's allowed me to make the right decision for the right reason, because mm -hmm. it's the right thing to do. It may not be the easy thing to do, but it was the right thing to do. And if we mm -hmm. think about making decisions because it's the right thing to do, I think we will make great decisions. Wow. So you are friendly. You are. You no, know I'm very friendly. <laughs> yeah. I love people. I absolutely do. I can, I could be talking to the president today in the White House and tomorrow or afterwards I walk out and I'll be talking to the beggar on the street. It doesn't matter to me who you are. If you want to talk, I will talk. And if you, you know, if there's something I can do to help you, I will do it. Yes, you definitely are. See, we are still in touch. <laughs> After we met many years ago at Southern Illinois University. Um, I'm, at least I met you again. You didn't know of me before, but it has I been- I knew of you, but I didn't <laughs> know you. Right, right. So it has been a blessing, and I'm it's glad that God brought up. Yeah, you know what are the odds that two young ladies grew up in a community, went to and the they same, went the same what they would call um, all is what elementary, junior high. I don't even know um, what it, they call it. No. Cavaliers. They call it Cavaliers All Age School. Yeah, but how? What would it be? Oh, in, in, the, US? in the U.S.? Grade so school. Middle school, great. Great middle school, elementary and middle school. Oh, okay. I think oh. up to sixth grade would be middle school. Okay. Or something like that. Yeah. But it's <laughs> we amazing. went to the same school at one point. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how God allowed our paths to cross again. And here we are today, just with this desire to just share about God and to let people know that promotion comes from him and he's exactly. in control regardless of what's happening in this world so we give thanks for that so you are friendly people see you as a real person authentic and what you see is what you get you're humble you're but at the same time you're tenacious tenacious you mentioned being aggressive with grace. Wow. 
and um, you're able to make the right decision for the right reason. You know, thanks. Thanks for sharing. So could you share with us some leadership lessons that you have learned along your journey? Yes, so when I, when I found myself in a leadership position, of course, I have, a, I have two older sisters that I grew up with. I have an older brother as well, but I was very close to my two oldest sisters. And I was allowed to be the baby of the, with, with them. So I was, they, they, allowed, they, they picked up all my slacks, you know? So I was, I was allowed to be a kid and they took the responsibilities. Mm. And so when I found myself in a leadership position and I didn't have my big sisters to take all the responsibilities and allow me to play, it was very difficult for me. I knew I can do whatever God called me to do. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, he's given me that um, ability, but it was very scary. And so there were some things I, I didn't like from watching others lead, and I tried not to do those things. And there were other things that I liked. And the, the biggest thing I've always told my students is that I'm going to try to be as fair as I can to everyone. I'm not going to pick, pick sides. I'm going, to, I'm going to be as fair as I can because I'm going to treat everyone the same. Mm. Because the moment you start crossing that line, you're going to lose respect, you know, and credibility. And so they don't always like it when I don't rule in their favor, <laughs> but none of us, none of us does, right? Do none of us like when it doesn't go in our, our way, but I can assure them that the reason, and I explain to them the reason I make those decisions mm -hmm. because I'm being fair to everyone. And I tell them, if you don't think I'm being fair to you, explain to me where I'm not being fair mm -hmm. because if I'm not, then yeah, we can discuss it. And I can say, well, maybe that wasn't fair. So let me adjust my decision because I want to be fair. I want all my students to know that they can come to me. And I, I'm, they've always caught, they also um, say I, I'm like a mother to them because I feel like the responsibility that I have is like a parent having to feed her children, right? because I'm, I'm responsible in many ways for their academic career. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's a huge responsibility that I don't take lightly. And so I listen, another, another thing I learned to do, I'm, I'm not perfect at it, but I'm learning to just listen, mm -hmm. listen to them, listen to their, their point. Um, having a child also is teaching me to listen more and um, and another another thing about being a leader is to just be confident. You're going to make mistakes, right? But if you're honest about who you are, which, like I said, that's just a part of me, I can come back and say I've made a mistake. I apologize. And not many people are good at saying I've made a mistake. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Some people would prefer to, you know, blame others or, you know, um, you know, do other things or try to hide it or something. But, you know, that's how you're going to grow. You're going to learn from your mistakes if you uh, admit to them and address them. Mm -hmm. And so I would rather admit and address to my mistakes than just hide them, ignore them and try to push, you know, ignore them. So. Those are some of the things that I try to do, but the, the first thing and foremost thing is to be fair. Mm. I try to be fair. Yeah. So you try to be fair, you listen, and you are not afraid to admit that you were wrong or to apologize. Mm. Thanks for sharing those leadership lessons with us. This next question ties in. Think of a leader 
who has impacted you in a positive way. Could you tell us uh, what you appreciated in that leader? Yes, so um, as I was saying, when I was at SIU, the department chair there was a, a lady, her name is um, Dr. Laurie, Laurie Vermeulen. And um, before arriving at SIU, um, I had my son a couple months after getting there. And my, when I was at University of Pittsburgh, I did not see any women with kids. There were women professors. So there were professors married, but they didn't have children. And so obviously being a professor or being a professional in chemistry or in the sciences with children is very difficult. And I was even told by someone never to mention the fact that you want kids. But there she was with three children, not just one, successful with three children. That blew my mind. And so I, I, I mean, I actually asked her, I was like, how you do this? Like, I told her why I asked her that question and said, I haven't seen this example before. And she explained about having support from her husband and, you know, not being able to go from associate professor to full professor because she's actually put her family first. And so haven't, ha haven't been able to excel to the next level to, to full professor. Um, and I think she had professionally, but there are other things that were at play. Mm -hmm. But she inspired me a lot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and no matter what came her way, she was always just calm about it and just dealt with it within her, her capabilities. She, she made decisions that were tough, but that's the decision she felt like needed to be made. She was in a man's world. And so there were a lot of challenges <laughs> to her decisions but that she taught me that you know these were the best decision for the department and not for one or two particular people so she was making the right decision for the right reasons mm -hmm. in spite of the challenges that were coming her way and so that inspired me and taught me how you know, when, when others come against you, and they will, you know, if you stay the course, you know, stay the course, make the right decisions for the right reasons, because at the end of the day, you have got to answer to, right? And your conscience as well. No, you can make mistakes, because maybe you think this was the right decision for this thing, but you made it with an with, with a honest intent, right? And I believe that God will correct you in those decisions if it wasn't, if they're not the right one. And so she's, she was the one that planted the seed and told me that I would be good at this. She told me some things she saw in me that I didn't see in myself. And, um, and so she was pretty instrumental as a leader. I was able to watch her. And um, she invited me on critical decisions and meetings that I wouldn't have had, you know, invitations to otherwise. And maybe that was some of the issues they had with her as well. But she was actually giving me some training that I didn't even know I needed at the time. And so I really appreciated her. I've told her many times. Um, and I thank God for putting her in my life. For a short time, she was only there wow. for maybe two years or three years while I was there. But it was a very short time. But within that short time, um, actually it was two, yeah, two or three years. But she had, she had made a tremendous impact during that short time. Wow. 
So you admire the, the fact that she was able to have some work-life balance, if there's such a thing, exactly. <laughs> with her children. Um, she was able to make tough decisions. She saw things in you and told you about those things that really planted a seed in your heart. Um, she invited you to meetings. She was actually putting you in, in a, yeah, training you. Wow. Um, this other question is almost the same as this, the, the previous one, but just in case you have any other things that you tend to admire in leaders just in general that you may not probably have mentioned here. Are they the same thing or are there others? Um, another thing I didn't mention was my advisor um, from my graduate, my graduate school or graduate mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as, as, as emotional being most women are, um, we can get up, you know, you hear something and you just go off on it, you know? And both of them, my, my advisor and, and Dr. Vermeulen were very calm when it was time to, when, when fire was all around them, they were just very calm. Mm. And my grandmother was like that. Wow. She was very calm. I'm like, how can you be calm in a time like this? Can't you see all the craziness happening? And, um, and they were just calm. And that has taught me to when things are going crazy, you know, just calm yourself and, you know, listen to the spirit mm -hmm. and do the best you can right then, because that's all we can do. And then before you know it, things work out. And it was great, funny because a few weeks ago, one of my students said, Dr. Scott, you know what I admire about you? And I was waiting to hear, oh, you're real and true and everything else. And he said, you are calm when everything else is going crazy. I'm like, what? I feel like I'm all crazy. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure they probably feel that they're not calm. But on the outside, you know, to me, they look pretty calm. And so my students are like, you look pretty calm. And we're going crazy. <laughs> So learning how to not overreact to a problem is critical to making wise decisions. Mm -hmm. not, not act out of emotions. Mm. Because a lot of times we tend to overreact because mm -hmm. our emotions are involved. And just learning how to take emotion out of it and my pastor always said emotions are real, but they're not always right. Mm. And um, learning how to put your emotions aside and look at the facts and look at the situation carefully and think about it with a clear head. And, um, you know, usually you will make a good decision. And if it's not, I always say God will lead me to the right decision if it's not. So... I'm, I've learned that. I don't know if I've, I've done it perfectly. My students think I'm, I'm doing it better than I think I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And so um, calmness is just not overreacting. I have, mm -hmm. I've worked with people who overreact and it's the most irritating thing to me mm -hmm. is overreacting mm -hmm. instead of just, mm -hmm. you know, my, my advisor used to say, hmm, okay. And I'm like, that's all you got to say? <laughs> and then he would think and he would say, okay, yeah, all right. Well, maybe, maybe you could do this. I'm like, why couldn't I think about that? Because I'm overreacting. You know, I'm emotional at the time. I'm not thinking straight. And so if we can learn how to do that as leaders, Mm -hmm. you'll find people will line up and they will start to do that mm -hmm. you know um being able to work on the stress mm -hmm. you know being able to be calm on the stress that's critical mm -hmm. so those were some of the, the things as well well no I'm do, going so do you find do you find yourself doing that with your students hmm. huh. 
Well, I didn't know I was doing it, but apparently I was because <laughs> most of the time I'm telling them to calm down. I didn't realize that's what I was doing. Oh, and I'm okay. like, yeah, it's not that bad. And they're like, what? Are you kidding me? And sometimes it's really bad. <laughs> But if you say it's really bad, you just go, you're just putting gasoline on the fire, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so just finding a way how to handle the situation mm -hmm. without overreacting. I'm, I'm learning. Wow. Not that I'm doing it perfectly, but I'm, I'm still in the learning process yeah. of that. I think you're calm too. I, I do. I think so. I don't know. You guys just have, God's you, grace. You haven't seen the overreacting. <laughs> yeah i know i know but by god's grace um so as you said that there are leaders that they show when they are fearful i've heard somebody say you know it's scary to see a scary leader it's it is. if you if your leader is is panicking then what are you supposed to do you're going yeah. to panic even more right yeah. um, so <laughs> a big part of leadership is not panicking. Wow. And you know, only God can help only us to God. truly be um, calm. Because and, the funny thing in, is, in the midst the, of the storm. I'm sorry. I was talking over you. I'm sorry. No, the that's funny cool. thing is, after the fact, and it's all, oh, I mean, you, you've made some decision and things calm down, then I'm panicking. Oh my God, it could have been this. It could have been worse. It could have been, and I'm just praying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that it's not this, you know? So it is God. It yeah. Is God. You it's know, it, 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 it is said that sometimes God calms the storm, but sometimes he allows the storm to rage and he calms you. you in the storm, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I know this next question might not be easy because... I'm going to ask you to choose a Bible verse. Can you imagine that? <laughs> choose your favorite Bible verse or a few verses that you'd like to share and why? So, of course, you know, we all have several very key Bible verses that we go to mm -hmm. in different times. But this is one that I pray almost every morning, and that is um, Jeremiah 29, 11, and 13, and most people know that. And I pray this because I really believe God has a plan for me. Mm. He has good plans for me. I pray that, God, you have good plans for me, plans of good and not of evil, to give me a future and a hope. And the next verse, verse 12, is critical. Most people don't say that verse. Mm -hmm. He says, when you call on me, you will have my ear. Hmm. Can you imagine that? God is saying, when I call him, he will always hear me. And then he said in verse 13, when I seek him with all my heart, I will find him. He will be found. So those are sure, sure words for me. And it builds my confidence, my confident hope in God. And so I pray that, I believe, um, if I don't pray it every morning, almost every morning, I decree that. And I thank God that he knows he has good plans for me and that I have his ear, that he hears me, little me, great God, but he still hears me. And when, and when, I, when I come after him with everything that Colleen has, he says, he's not going to hide. He's not going to hide from us. He's going to be right there. And so that's, that's a critical um, one for me. Another one that I, I don't say I pray this every day, but it's also instrumental for me as well. And it's Psalms 139. And it says, oh, Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. Imagine. We try to hide from God and try to hide, but God knows everything about us. He, I said, you know, my down sitting and my uprising, you understand my thoughts are far off. Why can't we hide from God? Mm. You know, so 
those are critical. You know, there are several others. I could, you know, talk about many others, but those are key Bible verses for me that um, I, you know, and, and, and I can't remember exactly where in Isaiah, but I'm probably, you, I think it's Isaiah 54, I want to say. But it says, um, no weapon form or fashion against me shall prosper. If I get the scripture wrong, forgive me. But I know the words. I may not know exactly where to find them. But that's another critical part. Um, because God said, no weapon. It may form, mm -hmm. but it will not avail. Yeah. And so we have to decree the word of God in our lives and over our lives all the yeah. time. And it becomes a part of us. So I have several. Yes. And you're right. It was Isaiah 54, verse 17. Okay. <laughs> and how about a favorite proverb? Yes. So my favorite proverb is going to be Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, again, it's critical for me because what God is taking me through, I have to trust him. <laughs> Mm -hmm. There's no other option. And I say to God, I don't have another option. Mm -hmm. I don't have a plan B. So it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your understanding. And Colleen can have a whole lot of different understanding. Mm -hmm. He says, in everything you do to acknowledge him and let him direct your path. And many times you may have heard me say over the course of this interview, that I truly believe that if I'm off the path, God will get me back on the right path. If I'm making the wrong decision, God will get me back on the right path because I really truly believe that he's directing my path. And so whenever I get off the path sometimes, and we do, um, you know, like the GPS system, he knows how to reroute us back to the right path. And he's better than our GPS system because sometimes they take us in, traffic and all that. And sometimes he does take us through traffic. Sometimes he takes us through holdups. Sometimes he took, he took um, Joseph through the prison. He got him sold into slavery, all for his purpose. And so we have to understand that if God is directing our path, even when things don't work out the way we hope or wanted them to, that he will, he's still directing our path. And I have to remember that, especially when things are not going according to Colleen's plan. And so that's my favorite one. Thank you for sharing. And what you said earlier about redirecting if you're on the wrong path, et cetera, is an excellent segue to the next question. Could you help someone who is trying to make a decision? It might be between two alternatives that seems right mm -hmm. on the surface, but they're trying to decide what recommendation would you have to help that person out to make a decision? You know, the first thing that everyone will tell the person is to pray. Mm. You, know, you need to pray. <laughs> you need to seek God. And when, you know, whenever I'm at those point, I say, God, that your will be done, not mine. Mm. Even if I don't like it, because I'm not going to tell you I like everything, every decision God made, but I understand that they're all for my good and they all work out for my good, whether I like it or not. So I would say the first thing is to pray and then move. Just, just make mm -hmm. a decision and move. If it's not the right one, God will direct your path. He will, he will, maybe you go through some curves and, you know, my path to where I am was not a straight line. Could God have put me in a straight line? Absolutely. But he chose to take me to Southern Illinois and made me do five years there and then start me over again. Mm -hmm. And then, but just make a decision, you know, and let, and, and just listen to the, for the voice of God as you move. And then peace is the good director of, of these decisions. And, I mean, sometimes I don't know what else would have happened, but then, you know, there was a time I had to give a talk and I agreed to give this talk. And the night before I had a really pretty bad dream. Mm -hmm. It didn't sit well with my spirit. And I felt like the Lord was saying something to me, but I didn't know what it was. 
And I tried to pray and I tried to pray and I tried to pray. And no matter how much I pray, I just could not shake this feeling. Mm. And then I got up and I, you know, I had arranged, my son was young, so I had arranged for someone to pick him up at school for me. I dropped him off at school. And at the stop stoplight, I put on my indicator to turn left. But then I noticed when I was turning, the indicator light wasn't working. It mm. wasn't on. So I'm like, that's weird. I put on my indicator. I knew I did it. Coming out of the school, I put on my indicator light again to turn left. And I noticed it didn't come on. I'm like, well, that's not good. I'm going to be driving on the road and I can't indicate. That can cause an accident. And then um, my windshield wiper would stop working. And then just the lights, my, my brake lights stopped working. Just a bunch of things just stopped working all of a sudden in my car. This was unnatural, unusual. So I called my husband and I said, all these things stopped working all of a sudden. I don't understand. So I have to give this talk. And so he said, go ahead and rent a car. So here I am trying to drive to the car rental place. I almost got in a wreck because I can't indicate that I'm turning, right? And so I'm getting people blowing me paw paw because I'm slowing down and turning and everything else. Got to the, the place, they didn't have a car. I'm like, well, <laughs> at that point I was, you know, so overwhelmed because all these things are happening and that dream was still on my mind that like God was saying something to me, but I didn't know what it was. Well, I did make a move to continue on with my day, but God blocked it every step of the way. So I said, I'm not going to go. I, ca I called the person who invited me. I said, unfortunately, I'm having all these issues this morning with my car, with my vehicle. I can't get a rental car. And even if I did by the time, it would be too late to get there anyway. And she was like, okay, no problem. We'll reschedule. I came home, I had peace. I went straight to sleep. I slept almost the rest of that day. I left my car outside because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't open the garage door because not the garage door, nothing was working, nothing was functioning in the car. And then I went to sleep, I got up, I turned the car on, everything was working again. Because now I'm concerned that I'm going to have to pay all this money to get this car fixed. I turned the car on. Everything worked. So I really believe God will orchestrate your step if you just, you know, stay in tune. He blocked all the different things, I believe. I don't know why I wasn't supposed to go. I don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. But I really believe God you know, like I said, I didn't have peace in my spirit after the dream. Mm -hmm. After I went to sleep and wake up, I felt fine. I, my peace was back. And, you know, so I would say, stay prayed up and listen to the voice of God when he's blocking things, acknowledge it, mm -hmm. and sometimes take a step back and see, you know, how, how that turns out. Wow. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. We don't always know the behind the scenes things, but God knows. Thank God you. knows. I truly believe that. So how do you tend to deal with challenges when they come? I know you have hinted throughout the interview. Um, I don't like challenges like anybody else. Nobody wakes up and say, God, give me all kinds of problems today. Mm -hmm. Okay, nobody does. But I do understand life brings challenges. And so I, you know, I, I pray and, um, and when things happen, you know, like everyone else, my blood pressure may rise and, and all these things. But like I said, I'm learning to be, to, to look at situation, not from an emotional standpoint, not from my feelings, but just look at the facts look at what's happening and see if there's a solution. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes they are, sometimes they're not, at least not immediately. 
mm -hmm. or it doesn't come to me. And when I don't have a solution, I said, mm -hmm. I don't have a solution. Mm -hmm. At least I don't have a solution right now. So maybe I can come back with one mm -hmm. some other time. But the biggest thing is not to be led by your emotion. Mm -hmm. you know, people always say, follow your heart. I've, I've said over and over, the Bible said the heart is evil and wicked. Mm -hmm. Who can know it? Mm -hmm. I said, follow the word of God mm -hmm. because your feelings change. Today I'm up, tomorrow I'm down. Right. But the word of God doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And so when we, when we, the word of God is so critical to our walk. The Bible says that we should walk in the spirit. What does that really mean, walking in the spirit, right? And it's because the spirit's not going to change, right? If you walk after your flesh, today your flesh wants apple, tomorrow it wants bananas, and mm -hmm. next week it hates apples. And, mm -hmm. you know, before you know, you're schizophrenic because your flesh can be all over the place. But the spirit of God is, is sure he doesn't change. If it's apple today, it's apple today. It's not going to change it to banana because you don't like apples, you know? And so just learning how to be calm in the midst of the storm, mm -hmm. it's not easy. I'm not saying this is easy thing, but it's, it's things we have to practice. Mm -hmm. And um, if I need to cry, I cry, you know? If I need to take some time to get my emotions together. I go in my office and get some time and I scream to myself mm -hmm. and whatever. And then I, you know, mm -hmm. look at the problem from a non-emotional standpoint and mm -hmm. try to see if I, I can, you know, God, if God has given me something to, to address this. So that would be what I would say. That's how I try to approach mm -hmm. challenge. Could you, could you share with us an example of a challenge that you had and how God gave you the wisdom to deal with it? A very, very recent, very recent one. Um, I had some issues with someone in my department and I just didn't like the way the person did things. And I, I don't like bullies and I don't like to be bullied. And I don't know that this person was trying to be a bully or it was just the way they behaved, but I didn't like it. It felt like I was being bullied. And, um, and I wanted to just go lash out against this person. My feelings did, by the way. And some people would, and some people have. And I was praying and I said, God, I really don't like this. And I'm going to have to speak to this person about it. And I did. I went to the person. I said, you know what? I really don't like the emails you send me or the text messages you send me because they seem very demanding. Instead of asking me, what am I doing or what am I planning to do with such and such? You're telling me what you're going to do with something that I've decided about. I have decision about without consulting me. It's just like you're demanding that you know, I do it your way. And I don't like that. And the person said, I am so sorry. I was being insensitive. And I was like, wow, that was easy. <laughs> I was like, that was easy. But my flesh wanted to go and say, I don't like this. I don't know, you know, just want to go off on this person. But the spirit of God said, just talk to the person. Mm -hmm. Now, could the person have reacted a different way and I probably went off? I don't know, but God didn't allow that. So he allowed the person to respond with, I was being insensitive, I apologize. And that just took all of the things away. So it's, you know, it's very critical to be in the spirit because we can, make, we can derail so many things by just walking in our flesh. The plans for our lives, we can go through the wilderness for 40 years instead of 11 days because of our flesh. And so just learning how to take a step back and pray about things and 
try to deal with things in a more mm -hmm. you know godly way it does it does pay off thank you for sharing thanks you have been talking about your journey, how God has been helping you. And you actually titled this conversation In His Hands. Why did you title this conversation In His Hands? And what would you say to somebody who is saying, or are you sure that it would, you have been in His hands? <laughs> is this by chance? So as you can can tell from my experience that I've been in his hands because I really believe the critical steps in my life were all orchestrated by God. And at pivotal moments, um, he, has, he opened doors that only he, him, he could have opened, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I truly believe I, I, mean, I, I am definitely in his hands for reasons I've shared and reasons that I haven't had time to share. Mm. And so if, if someone said, well, it could have been by chance or, you know, luck, you're lucky. Well, am I lucky 50 times, you know, all those critical moments in my life, am I just lucky? Mm. No, I don't believe in chance. I believe in God and I believe in God, you know, um, just orchestrating mm -hmm. my life. He has plans for me. And I believe he's, you know, doing it. Mm -hmm. So God's providence in our life is what takes us to where we are. Mm -hmm. And that, but I mean, it could have been by luck good, but it could have been by luck bad, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. How, you, how, how did luck make it good and luck make it bad, you know? Mm. So how did the chance make it good or the chance, I, you know? So I, I believe, I know it was God, not just believe. I know the way things happen, it just, the chance doesn't work that way. It was too many things had to be in order, mm. right? For it to just be chance. Chances, okay, one thing happened, but for, for this thing had to happen so that this could happen, so that this could happen for me to be where I am, how could that be changed? Thanks for sharing. Are there any resources that you'd recommend for our viewers to review? You know, I, I do devotions a lot. You may have heard me talk about my devotions. Um, I love the Bible app. I absolutely love the Bible app. All those different devotionals that are on there, I use them a lot. And they help you to stay focused on something that you're praying about or a situation or an issue or something going on. Of course, prayer is key. You can't, you can't, you can't not pray mm -hmm. and talk to God. He has the, all the answers, you know, but it's also sometimes you need a person. And I, I'm, I must admit, I don't do very well at this, this last one. I pray a lot. I, I, I do my devotion. But confiding in people is not easy for me mm -hmm. when I'm going through. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been misjudged many times because, you know, people say, oh, she's a professor. So that means she has to be like this or she has to be like that. And I'm just me, you know. And I just... You know, I struggle with it. It's not, it's not an excuse, but it's something I need to do better at. But if you can find someone that you can confide in and, and talk about, a godly person who will pray with you, not just listen to you and tell you what they feel like you should do. Mm. But they will actually pray with you and see God with you for answers. Mm. That's, you know, because the Bible said we're two or three touch air agree in his name you know so when we are agreeing and adding your faith to my faith and to someone else's faith we're building faith you know and we build faith in each other as we pray together and so all of our faith is building up and we're standing on this faith 
Mm. And so I really believe having, and I have a person, a friend that, you know, I would ask to pray with me whenever I'm going through all my sister or some, my aunt or something. Um, but I'm not very good at it. I don't do it as much as I probably should. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I encourage that to mm-hmm. have someone you can pray with and mm. talk to. Yeah. So human resource can, human resource that, can, be, <laughs> can be good. Yes, yes. Wow. Um, Dr. Scott, you have shared such practical words of wisdom with us today. And I just want to thank you. Thank you for taking the time to share with us your amazing story to help us with our leadership journey. And I want to say thank you for asking me to do this. This is an honor. It's a privilege to share a testimony about what God has done in my life. I mean, people will see you and they think that you just got here by your bootstraps. And I will be the first to say, nope, I don't even have a bootstrap. (laughs) You know, had it not been for God on my side, there's no telling where I would be. So I am am just thankful to the Lord. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to share. I hope it bless somebody. I hope it encourages someone. And um, and again, you know, I'm I'm in and I'm here to if someone wants to further clarification about something I share or more information, I am that person. Okay, thank you. Thanks for sharing and I uh, will link to the resource that you share the bible app in the app absolutely yeah, yeah. below this video and whatever else you'd like to share for them to get in touch with you um viewers i'll link to that below as well so viewers i want to thank you also for taking the time to listen to this conversation i was blessed thanks again dr scott and we know that if you share it with other people they will be blessed too so thanks again and We hope that you will join us, join us in the next one.